All right, today we're going to be talking about scatter plots and regressions, specifically linear regressions. This is a topic that comes up in a lot of statistics courses, and you will find that this topic is also scattered, pun intended, amongst a lot of your math classes that you'll take in high school and in college. So today is kind of a little bit of a review for some of you. For some of you, it might be brand new, but some important things to note. First of all, it's a really cool unit because we're going to deal with some real world data and it helps us answer that question of when am I ever going to have to use this and why is this relevant and what might this be used for. Also, it's important to note that you will definitely need your calculator and all of the directions are typed up in your packet. So if you forget how to input a bunch of data or make the scatter plot, you have them typed out very much step by step that you can look back at. But during the video, you can also just follow along. I'll have a calculator on the screen and you can participate that way. But please make sure you have your graphing calculator nearby. So fast food is often considered unhealthy because much of it is high in both fat and calories. But the question is, are the two of those things related? So we have a table of information where we have fat and we have calories. Well, we're gonna call fat our variable X or our input, and we're gonna call calories our variable Y or our output. So what this table is telling us is that some piece of fast food with 19 grams of fat is going to have 410 calories. Some piece of fast food with 43 grams of fat is going to have 660 calories. Our first task is to create a scatter plot. And what a scatter plot does is it takes all of these points, x, y, x, y, x, y, and it literally scatters them on your calculator to create a picture. So go ahead and find that calculator. And the first thing we need to do is put in all of our data so that we can look back at it and our calculator has it to reference. So on your calculator, after you turn it on, go ahead and press stat. And then you've got this option where it says edit. And we're going to press enter. And you're going to see lists, L1, L2, L3. Some of you may have information stored, some of you might not. And I'll show you how to clear that out. If you don't have anything in there, just hold tight for about 20 seconds. If you do, let me show you how to do this. So you're going to move your cursor until the actual list is highlighted. So L2 right now is highlighted, and you're going to press clear and press enter. And then you're going to scroll and go up to L1, press clear and press enter. And now all your data from a previous example is gone. And in our L1, we're going to put in our X variable or our fat grams. So fat grams were 19, 31, 34. 35, we have two 39s, so there's two different items of fast food on our menu that have 39 grams of fat and 43. And then we're gonna cursor over. And what's important here is that your calories line up with the fat. So 19 grams of fat gave us 410 calories for an output. Then we had 580, 590, 570, 40, 680, and 660. And we have our two lists. So now those are stored in our calculator and we can make reference back to them as we need to. So go ahead and press second, quit. So second and then the mode button to be back in your home screen. And now we're gonna get to the part where we actually create our scatter plot. So you wanna press second, y equals, because that's gonna get to that stat plot. And this screen is gonna show up and we want to press enter, so we talk about plot one. And you want to turn plot one on. So right now the cursor is flashing, press enter, and now the stat plot is on. We do want this first part, that's a stat plot. Our X list is in fact our fat grams, which is in L1. And our Y list is our calorie list, which is list two. And then you can change what marks you want, however you want your dots to show up. And if you have the color version, you can also change your color apparently, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so if your thing doesn't say L1 or L2, I guess I should show you that real quick. You can press this right here, L1, so second, one, and then right here is L2, so you can press second, two, and now we have the information that we want. And then you can go ahead and press graph. And we see nothing. So under zoom, you've got all these different options. We want to go down until we find zoom stat, which I can scroll down or I can just press nine. And then your scatter plot should appear. All right, so now we have our scatter plot. 
we've got our data going on here. Our x-axis was our fat grams, and our y-axis was our calories. So I want you to take a second, and I want you to think if, to describe, sorry, how these variables are related. So what do we know about fat, and what do we know about calories? Can you describe their relationship? Go ahead and take a second, and I'm going to tell you to pause and write down what you think, how you think these variables are related. So pause now. All right, so some things you may have written down that as fat grams, which was our X, increase, calories appear to increase, calories was our Y, as well. So if you think about that coordinate grid, that coordinate grid, we have fat and we have calories. So as fat goes up, calories are going up as well. We also have that this data appears linear, which means it looks like I could draw a line kind of straight through all of it. It also says that it, there appears to be a direct relationship, which means that as we directly increase our fat, we are directly increasing our calories. All right, so realistically, what just happened, I had to pause the video and undo and I had to re-record a bunch of stuff, but hopefully that picked up okay and we're back on the same page. Um, something I want you to notice is that all of these statements say appear. When we talk about data, we want to make sure that we're talking about it in a way that leaves a little bit of objectivity would be the right word, I guess. Um, because data, we have all these discrete points, and we don't really know how they're connected. We can interpret how we think they'll be connected or how we think they'll be related. So we want to use those, those words appear or appears in order to describe our data. So the next thing, use your calculator to create a linear regression for the data. What is your equation? So going back to your calculator, we're going to go to stat. This time we're going to go over to calc. And we're going to select number four. Now, on your, paper, on your paper, there's all these directions. So if you forget from the video, you can definitely go back and read step by step. You'll notice that four and eight look the same, except for what follows. So a linear regression is going to make a line. Number four is going to give us a line that's slope-intercept form. Number eight is going to give us a line which is those things flip-flopped. So I'm going to go with number four. And then it tells me, do I want my X list to be list one? And yes, yes, I do. Do I want my Y list to be list two? Yes, yes, I do. And then it gives me the option to store my regression equation. So where I want to store that is in my Y1 so that it will plot things for me later. So I'm going to go to variables, vars, scroll over to Y vars, select function, and select Y1. Now, if you have an older calculator, when you selected number four, you might get to your home screen and you see this and a flashing cursor. What you want to press is second one, because that'll get you L1, comma, second two, because that'll get you L2, then go to your VARS and get your Y VARS and your Y1. Then I'm going to go down here to calculate, and this tells me that my A, or my slope, is 11.055, and my intercept, or my B, is 210.954, we'll round to. So, my equation, Y equals 11.055, X plus 210.954. So, graph your equation on the same viewing window as your scatter plot. So, if I go ahead and press graph, because I stored it in Y1, I now see this line coming up. Do we think this is an accurate model for our data? I'm going to say yes. Line appears to fit the data. Now, an explanation of that would be that as fat increases, calories increase, and this line has a positive slope. All right, so that fits. We said our data appears linear, and we used a linear regression that seemed to fit the model. So I think that yes, this is a good, it appears to be a good representation of our data. All right, so interpret the slope of the linear model in context of the data. So the first thing, let's break down this sentence. Interpret the slope. Well, let's first identify the slope. The slope is going to be this right here, 11.055. Well, we know slope from Algebra 1 to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is really the change in y over the change in x. Well, our y was calories, 
and our x was fat. So interpreting in terms of our data, we would say that it appears that for every one gram of fat, added, we predict, because we're using a model, so we don't actually know, we're just going to predict 11.055 calories are added. So if you think about that on a graph, as we move over one fat gram, we're moving over, or up rather, 11 calories. All right, so then it says interpret the y-intercept. Well, our y-intercept is this number right here, 210.954. We learned in an earlier video that a y-intercept is written in the form 0, comma, because we have an input of 0. In this case, if our x value is 0, so when we have zero grams of fat, we predict 210.954 calories. All right, and again, we're using that appears and predicts. It's just kind of language to make sure that we're, we know we're talking about a model and we know that we're not talking about hard and fast data. We've used some really good data points to create this model, but the model itself is not necessarily a very strict rule for mathematics. These two questions, by the way, are going to be asked of you a lot when we're talking about scatter plots. So I would continue to break down the question in the way that I did. Think about the change in y, change in x, and what units you're using. All right. So for every one gram of fat, we increase by 11 calories. Okay. Think about where those things fall as far as variables go. So use your, use your equation to predict how many calories there would be with a, with a burger of 28 grams of fat. Then we're going to predict with 50 grams of fat. Well, I'm going to remind you that this was our x variable. So I want you to use the equation that you came up with. You're going to plug in 28 for x, and then you're going to do it again, plugging in 50 for x, and see how many calories those burgers would have. So go ahead and pause your video now and do those two problems. All right, hopefully we came up with a 28 gram of fat burger has 528 calories, and a burger with 50 grams of fat has 763 calories. So I would say that both of these values appear to make sense because the higher the fat, the more calories. This 28 grams is something that we call interpolation. And the reason we call that interpolation is because if we go back to our original data, 28 falls within our set of 19 to 43. So we are using our model and we're using a data point that exists kind of within that scale. So that is usually going to be a good representation. This next one though, if we talk about 50 grams of fat back in our data, that falls way over here. So we call that extrapolation because we're using this data set to make predictions about what's happening way out here at 50. So we're extrapolating or pulling from data that's further out. Okay. I don't expect you to necessarily remember those terms, but they are good mathematical words to have in your vocabulary. So interpolation is because 28 is in our range, right? And then 50 extrapolation is because that's outside of our data set and we're using our model to predict what's happening outside of the data points that we, we had in particular. All right. One last reminder. All of those calculator instructions are typed out very much step by step. If you have a different calculator than I had and you have questions about it, please see either me, Ms. Schwartz, Mrs. Logus, or Mr. Lakin. Any of the math teachers will be able to help you with your calculator.